Oh, there's one. There we go. Finally got one on. Way down there to 80 feet. Let's bring him up. Pretty little kokanee. There we go. First kokanee on the jig this morning. <laughs> first kokanee on the jig you can see a bunch of them on the graph there way down there at 80 90 feet so this is a great way to target them from a kayak especially in the fall when they're schooled up like that and uh, put some fish in the boat nice little buck here okay put a little bit of maggot on this 10 gram jig i don't want to overload the bait on here because it will inhibit the action so i'm going a little bit of maggot which stays on there well and some corn as well corn does tend to get stripped off a little bit faster but having that maggot on there that berkeley gold maggot helps to uh give me some confidence that there's going to be some bait down there even if that uh, corn gets stripped now i definitely prefer trolling to uh, jigging there's a time of year during the early spring and during the fall that i really like to come out and do the jigging it's especially when they're schooled up like this and a little bit more aggressive it seems like in the spring they're just really eager to feed especially when they're feeding near the bottom on chironomids and during the fall they're schooled up sort of getting ready for that spawn that's uh, the time I really like to jig for them so I just drop down into them I'm using my uh, electronics here to Determine my depth. And sort of drop right into those schools and then just try different jigging cadences until you figure out what they want. It's there's one right there. It seems like the shorter jigs this morning are producing a little bit better, a little shorter jigging action. And then just keep constant pressure, just bring them straight up. No read to you don't want to pump and reel. Just straight bring them up. They're pretty good at throwing the hook. <laughs> there we go. Another one in the another one in the boat. If you're in a power boat, you can just chuck them straight into the bottom of the boat. Don't even worry about netting them because it actually slows you down quite a bit when the bite's good. Alright. Because the little treble hooks on these jigs make it a pain, but. I'm in a kayak and if I try and bounce them into the kayak, it just doesn't uh, doesn't go as smoothly. They tend to bounce right back out. So, go with a half of a Berkeley Gulp Maggot here. I got, these are soaked in garlic bloody tuna, which is my standard late season scent oil. Doing the same on the corn. If I'm going to be jigging, I'll go a little bit heavier with the salt on the corn just to uh, make sure I got firm pieces. And if they're just a little bit soft, I just chuck them. You can just barely see my jig going down when I have the fish finder at max. Once I get into that school, there was a bite. I missed that. There we go. Got him. Bringing them straight up. Now I'm using 15 pound braid. You can go as low as 10. You just want to keep it really thin so you get a lot of sensitivity. And then six pound leader. This is a nice little buck. I tend to catch more bucks jigging, I notice, especially in the fall. They're just a little more aggressive with uh, I got that testosterone going a little bit. There we go in the boat. There you go. Nice little kokanee on a jig. That's a major craft jig para 10 gram in orange and red. Good color. So I'm using a 7 foot 1 medium light fast action graphite rod. I like that 7 foot approximate length. Um, it just 
gives me a little bit more leverage and speed on the rod tip so I can set that hook really quickly. And then you want that fast action graphite rod so that you can feel that bite and get a quick hook set because you're, you know, here I'm jigging at almost 80 feet deep. So I want to be able to get on that hook set in a hurry. And, you know, glass rods and composite rods just aren't going to do it. Um, they're just a little too slow, not as sensitive as this graphite. I really like uh, drop shotting rods. Rods are designed for drop shotting for bass. Um, they have just the right amount of sensitivity for this kokanee jigging. Okay, I'm almost down in there in that school. There we go. Just trying to keep this as vertical as I can. It's a little bit challenging in this wind. A little bit of drift isn't a bad thing because you can kind of move through the schools and... Oh, that was a bite. I missed it. So easy to miss the bite. Some days they want the big long jigs. Like I'll do like really long strokes that are two or three feet. Today they seem to want like the, just the quick little flick of the wrist and you'll always catch them on the fall like you'll go to pick it up like there was probably a bite because it took a little bit longer to fall than usual having good bait definitely helps there are days that you don't need the bait especially as you get closer to the spawn they just seem to be more aggressive towards just the lure but I've noticed that if I don't have my bait on there I'm most days I won't get nearly as many fish. Seems like the shallower fish, like it's 40 to 60, just aren't feeding, but the ones at 80, I'm mean, getting more bites. I'm gonna focus on those guys. All right, I'm in the middle of a big school. There's one. Yeah, so for a kokanee angler who wants to target fish at 80 feet deep but doesn't necessarily have access to a downrigger, then jigging is a really great option. Whoa! Nice puck. <laughs> there we go. Got him. Got him on the top hook on this jig par, which is kind of nice. It has two hooks in it. So you can get them in both. Not a bad fish. Right, let's get rebaited and get back down there. Definitely when you get to those dense schools, you get on top of them. They are aggressive. The tough part of fishing them right next to this cliff is I can pick up the cliff off my fish finder at times so it kind of masks the schools and can make them really hard to find. Really heavily relying on my electronics today, which is normal when jigging. But, you know, picking up these little targets at uh, those more extreme depths can be pretty challenging. So, it's a lot about boat positioning and, you know, looking at how I the angle of my drop. And it's a nice school here at 80, and that's the ones that I've been getting bit on. There he is, got him. Ah, oh, he popped off. I think I'll still be there. Yeah, he's still there. He's just swimming up with me. <laughs> Sometimes, oh, yes, they swim up with you like that. And uh, you can't feel him. He's just coming straight up with me. That was a little guy anyway. Next year's fish. There he is, got him. <laughs> had to get my line straight up and down get back on top of them they had moved up to 60 just a little bit this feels like a nice fish yeah it's a decent fish there we go got him awesome They make all those noises because you're bringing them up from 80 feet deep. There's a lot of gases. There you go. 
go. Nice little buck on the Major Craft Jig Para. Good looking guy. Pretty little blue backed buck there. Cool. Nice. I would change up, but I hate to move away from an effective lure. These bite windows for kokanee in the morning are pretty narrow sometimes, so just gonna stick with this uh, orange and red one. I have pink and orange, chartreuse. Those colors all work too, but I really like this little bit of red in the fall for some reason. Just does pretty good for me. You can watch my jig going down. It's at 40. Oh, there's a fish ball on it. This is at 60. There he is, got him. <laughs> That's cool. I saw that individual fish chase that thing down there and get it. Ooh, nice fish. Come on. Got him. So there's basically three cadences that I can use for coconut. There's big jigs like this where I'll make these big jigging motions. And then there's what I've been getting most of my bites on today, which is basically this flip of the wrist. I'm doing about 12 to 16 inches on the rod tip. And then there's sometimes, especially when I'm ice fishing for them, just these little pops like this, just tap, 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 tap. And then I'll even stop and sometimes I'll just get hit when I stop. But today they seem to want just like the really sharp 12 to 16 inch or jigging motions. I always try to angle it so the line is going right underneath my transducer. So, you know, you don't want your line going away. This way I can watch my jig go down. If it's right underneath the transducer, I tend to get better ability to detect even that small jig falling. There we go. There's one. Just had to get down to those 80 footers. It's interesting, sometimes they will come up 10, 20 feet for a jig, and there are other times that they will not move at all. You really gotta drop it right on top of their heads. And that seems to be the case today. That's cool. I love catching them on jigs, man, it's so much fun. This is where having uh, my uh, Old Town Autopilot was probably be a huge advantage if I can spot lock out here right now on top of these schools and not have to fight the wind even the tiniest breeze bump you around I'm passing 70 there's my first fish following it he's chasing it yeah I'm back at 90 There he is. Got him. Pressure on him. Yep, stay down, guys. That guy came off in the net. Got a little bit of cloud cover here, so the fish have kind of spread back out away from the shadow side of the cliff. Well, let's try changing up colors because uh, I'm getting hit here I'm on the red and orange now. I got a pink and silver one, we'll try. So I always tie directly into the split ring. I don't tie into a duo lock or anything like that. Um, I like just a little bit more sensitivity, a little tighter connection to the jig. So that's why I don't use duo locks. I also tend to find I get more tangles with the duo locks than I do with the tying into the split ring. This is a pink and silver one and it's got a little glow strip down the outside. Let me just show you real quickly how I bait these. So I'll put one kernel of corn on and then a half of a Berkeley Gulp maggot. See, they want the pink and silver. If not, we can try something like chartreuse. It's a good color when it's overcast. 
Oh, that was a fish. That was that was my mess up. There's one. Yeah. Maybe the corn's the magic today. It's, they're weird like that. They're peculiar. Sometimes you need the combo to, to get them to bite. Got him. It's no weird. Oh, there's one. Got one finally at 40 feet. <laughs> Took forever. Finally got a shallow fish to hit. There we go. Got him. Sweet. He popped right off that jig. All right, so that was a very quick limit of 10 fish on jigs. Targeting these kokanee at 80 feet deep from a kayak. This would even be a pain in my downrigger and be very challenging with dropper rigs. I'd have to use like five ounce weights, but just a little light rod, a couple jigs, some corn and Berkeley Gulp maggots. I put a limit of 10 kokanee in the kayak in less than two hours it's only nine o'clock so that's a pretty fast limit really good action i lost several more uh, but it just goes to show how effective this jigging is especially in the fall when these fish school up and are hyper aggressive all right i'll put links to these jigs below if you have any questions just let me know if this video helped you out do me a favor there and hit that super thanks and make a one-time donation to the channel to help it out i'm looking to add some new cameras and uh update the gear for the next year. All right, guys, I'll see you out on the water. And just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye, guys.